so my journey of being glued to a screen uh, started about three uh, decades ago with a Commodore 64 computer. And for the, the last couple of decades, the screen has been at the center of our interactions with the world around us. But the long reign of the screen is finally coming to an end with the emerging power of the voice. Analysts predict that by 2020, 50% of all searches will be via voice. And voice assistant users will be using voice to uh, complete one-fifth of their uh, shopping uh, in the next three years. So what this means is that what we've been used to doing via our screens, we're, we're starting to do using our voice. And there will be over one billion voice assistant devices in circulation by the end of this year. And in the UK, one third of the people aged 16 to 44 who don't currently own a device, a voice assistant device, are planning to get one in the next one or two years. And that includes myself and several of my colleagues and friends. So the financial implications of the voice industry are huge. Um, the global voice um, speaker market is set to reach a revenue of 13 billion US dollars uh, by the end of 2024. And it's not just the big players like Amazon and Google dominating the market. The voice industry is growing fast and it's growing everywhere. So voice is here to stay, but do we as customer insight seekers know how to make the most of this technology? Are we aware of the opportunities and the possibilities that it provides in getting us that one step closer to our customers? And we also have to ask that in a world where we are drowning in data, is, is voice adding anything new to the table? We have all these data points now, more data than we can analyze and make sense of. So is voice just adding more noise to an already chaotic and already very crowded data universe? I believe otherwise. I believe that voice has something very new and very powerful to say to us about human beings. And I've identified three key opportunities for how we can leverage voice to generate new customer insights. And I believe that as the technology evolves and our understanding of it develops, there will be many more that we can add to this list. So to start with voice surveys. So voice surveys are the next step in the evolution of market research from paper surveys to telephones to screen and, um, and mobile and now to, to voice. Voice surveys are conducted uh, using voice bots which are powered by artificial intelligence. And voice surveys allow us to collect information in the moment and in a much more conversational way. It is um, crucial to use um, and very useful to use voice surveys when context is, is important, like when someone's driving or when someone's cooking, when their hands are full and their time is very limited. At Kantar, we have recently developed uh, an Alexa skill for uh, product feedback. Basically, when users are um, using a product and they have an issue with the product, they can use the um, Alexa skill and activate it by saying, Alexa, open product feedback, and then they can give their feedback uh, in the moment. We can then visualize the data in real time uh, on a dashboard. What this means is this is essentially a voice call center um, that connects brands with their consumers. It allows for immediate and, and a very convenient way for brands uh, to connect with their consumers and, and vice versa. And um, the, the second um, opportunity that I see in voice is related to the question of once we collect voice data, what are some of the things we can do with it? And my favorite is um, detecting emotion from voice. So basically taking a voice clip and analyzing it for the underlying emotions like temper, like excitement, positivity, and mood. And decoding, decoding emotion from voice is very much like facial coding, but instead of using facial expressions, we use voice to detect the emotion behind the words. So that gives us a much deeper level of understanding in what the respondents are saying and, and what they're thinking. And on the other hand, we can also use emotion from voice to build better voice bots. At the moment, voice bot, it's very difficult for voice bots to understand subtleties in human speech. So if we can use this uh, emotion from voice data, we can build better voice bots that are able to have more natural, more, more human, and more sympathetic conversations with respondents. 
So, so far I've taken you through two of the key um, opportunities in voice, the voice surveys and uh, emotion from voice. And what these do um, is that on a, very, uh, on a much smaller scale, they give us a lot of information on the individual. But what if we want to go beyond the individual? What if we want to think bigger? So we c imagine if we were to capture a whole day of conversations in a shop like this, or a whole um, array of, of calls to a voice call center. We would have a much bigger data set, and therefore we could um, analyze patterns in, in, in speech and voice. And from a complete list of conversations, we can get a much bigger picture, and more importantly, we can get real-time data on brand experience. And thanks to AI and machine learning, we can now work with and analyze unstructured data of this scale to come up with new customer insights. So I've taken you through uh, very quickly through uh, three key opportunities that I see in voice. The voice surveys uh, using voice spots, uh, emotion recognition from voice, and also using voice as big data to get customer insights and information on a much, much bigger scale. So voice is undoubtedly here to stay. And it's here to challenge the, our very well-established allegiance to our screens. The uh, technology is developing very fast, and the consumers are ready. So, um, but do we as, uh, are we, as consumer um, insight seekers, aware of the, the full potential of this technology? Are we feeling excited or daunted by it? Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you will feel the same level of excitement that I do about this technology. And the question is, can you hear the possibilities yet? Thank you. Thank you.